Hello friends and welcome to a super quick video lecture on topic R2.1. This is more amounts of chemical changes. We're going to focus just on atom economy today. Our guiding question is how are chemical equations used to calculate reacting ratios? We're going to focus on just this one understanding atom economy. It's a measure of efficiency in green chemistry. Our objectives, we're going to talk about what even is this idea of green chemistry and then focus on atom economy. We're going to define it and then practice some calculations. We already have calculated some percent yield in our stoichiometry unit. Remember that this is our actual yield, how much we actually made when we went to the lab, divided by the theoretical yield. How much should we have made of that product given our stoichiometric calculations and then times 100 to turn that into a percent. So a measure of success of making some particular product. In green chemistry, now we're thinking about the whole entire process of making that product, not just how much of the product did we actually make. We're also considering the impacts of the whole entire process on the environment. We're trying to minimize our use and the production of hazardous chemicals. We're going to try to use aqueous solvents or perhaps even use no solvents at all. Here are some examples of solvents recommended water, ethyl alcohol. These guys are not too problematic for the environment. As we go down, 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 we can do stuff that we are hoping to not use. Uh, diethyl ether and benzene and chloroform. These are things that are bad for us and bad for other organisms and the planet. We're going to try to use some renewable reactants so that we are not depleting resources. And we're going to try to find some uses for byproducts so that we are not creating a bunch of waste. There are 12 important principles of green chemistry. When you start planning your scientific investigation, your IA for chemistry, try to incorporate as many of these as possible. Today, though, we are going to focus on atom economy. The formula for atom economy is given to us in section one of the data booklet, some relevant equations. It is here, percent atom economy. It's the molar mass of the desired product divided by the molar masses of all of the reactants, all added up together times 100 to turn it into that percent. The idea behind atom economy is to get as much of the masses of the reactants into the product as possible. So let's do a couple simple calculations to see how this works. Let's say that we have A and B are my reactants and we're producing desired product C. If I use my percent atom economy equation, I'm going to put the molar mass of my desired product C. It's 50 grams per mole. I'm going to divide that by the sum of the masses of all the reactants, A and B. A is 20 grams per mole and B is 30. So I'm going to do 20 plus 30. Of course, that is equal to 50. And then times 100 to turn it into a percent. So now I have 50 divided by 50. That's equal to 1. 1 times 100 is 100 percent. That means that 100 percent of the masses of my reactants ended up in my product. We don't have any waste. This is wonderful. Hooray! What if instead of making C, I want to make D, but this reaction leads to this other product that we actually don't want? We're going to calculate it the same way. I'm going to put my molar mass of D, D's molar mass is 40, divided by the masses of all of the reactants. That's going to be 20 and 30 again. Notice that I am not including the molar mass of E because it is not part of my desired product. Times 100. 20 plus 30 is still 50. 40 over 50 is 0.8 times 100 is 80%. So only 80% of my reactants masses ended up in my desired product. 20% of the mass was wasted. This is not as great, but it's still not too bad. Let's do one more example, but this time we're going to use a real chemical equation. So one of the ways that we can make acetyl salicylic acid, this is also known as aspirin, is to react salicylic acid and acetic anhydride. So we don't care about this ethanoic acid. It is a byproduct, not part of our desired product. So to calculate percent atom economy of this reaction, we're going to take the molar mass of our acetyl salicylic acid, also known as aspirin. That is 180 grams per mole. Divided by the molar masses of all my reactants, the salicylic acid plus the acetic anhydride. 
138 plus 102 is going to give us a grand total of 240 grams per mole times 100 to turn this into a percent. You could whip out your calculator, but friends, look at the math that we can do in our heads. 10 divided by 10 is going to be 1. We can cancel out our zeros. If I divide top and bottom by 6, 18 divided by 6 is 3. 24 divided by 6 is 4. 3 over 4 is 0. 0.75 times 100 is going to give us an atom economy of 75%. And can you believe that we have already accomplished our objectives? We defined green chemistry, considering all aspects of a reaction and their impacts on the environment. We defined atom economy, looked at how we can find the equation for it in our data booklet, and then we did some of those calculations. Great work today, my friends.